Hi guys, this is Dr. Margolin. Um, well, we are in a pandemic situation. Uh, most questions we got for this video is about the situation we deal with. Um, you can, I can refer you to the video uh, we made in the beginning of February when the um, coronavirus situation just started to unfold. We have several um, positive cases in our state, in Ohio. Um, with uh, significant efforts by the authorities to contain the epidemic. So what can we do? What are the new points? What else you can do? Obviously follow up the CDC instructions, follow up instructions by local authorities. Watch our previous videos. We wanted to edit a couple of points. There were some changes that I'll emphasize and we wanted to edit a couple of points. First two points I want to make. Um, and again, this is my personal opinion. I do go through the literature. Um, having said that, um, there is a lot of unknown and um, each case is different. So again, obviously, if you have any concerns about your health or health of others, obviously go to your, uh, to your primary care or other healthcare provider and follow the instructions. This video is just for general information. However, the bottom line, I think that any person, regardless of his situation in Minsk, can take significant steps with um, containing the infection. How we can do it? Two basic things is washing hands, and I mentioned in my previous video, today I'll actually go over with you step by step how to do it. Even though it sounds so simple, it's not. And secondly, properly disinfecting areas. And I will actually go over with you on how to disinfect your um, s cell phone, which um, is, can be um, basically a source of viruses and infection and contamination for many people. So without further ado, let's do that. And let's, let's talk about other ideas um, for immune boost and other ideas you can do to uh, prepare for uh, the pandemic. Thank you. Hi, my name is Angie and I've been coming here since 2011 and I've had a lot of back pain, but since I've been coming here, it's been controlled and I'm very happy and pleased with the coming to this doctor. Hello, my name is Vicki Curry and I've been coming to Dr. Mongolan for about four and a half years now. And I am really happy to be here with him because he shows a lot of concern about my health, what's going on with me. He gives me a lot of good advices and medications as well to help me. I appreciate the fact that I have him in my life. I don't know what I'd do without him. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sally Plummer. I've been coming to Dr. Margolin for two and a half years, and it's been a wonderful experience. I've been searching for a doctor for a long time and we don't know what we do without him. Hi, my name is Michael. I'm a patient of Dr. McGollins. And I wanted to share with you this, um, this survey because I've um, been a patient of Dr. McGollins for like the last three years. And he has earned my respect, he's earned my trust. And I feel like I've made the best decision in the world to have him as my doctor. His staff, they've been exceptionally professional as well as himself. Any concerns that I have, they get addressed. And it, and it makes me feel like my health matters. Hi guys, Dr. Margolin. So, I will show you how to wash hands. It seems basic, but it's extremely important. So before I do that, what can be used ideally? And again, any soap is good if you don't have it, but ideally 70% um, alcohol uh, cleaners like Purell, no commercial interest. If there is any other 70% uh, alcohol cleaner is great. Um, if you don't have it, you can use 70% alcohol. It's very inexpensive. However, if you do it all the time, you irritate your skin. So I would say if you don't have it after suspicious exposure or a lot of um, concern, you, you can use it. Now, how you do that? 
Now see, I with my knuckle, I open water. I make my hands wet first. Then I put soap. See, I put soap. Then I do that. I spread the soap. And here is the most important part. The 20 seconds starts now. When I put my hands under the water, and how I don't count till 20, you'll go crazy doing it each time. I put my hands under the water and I say, Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. That's all. I clean my hands. You can close the water. You can clean it preferably with uh, disposable, disposable wipes and your hands are clean. Um, it's not that difficult. It becomes second nature once you learn how to do that. Hi guys. Now I want to talk about disinfector, disinfection. Obviously you want to clean your doorknobs, um, you know, obviously uh, every, every, every place when people touch, obviously your, your bathrooms, um, anywhere that people touch, you want to disinfect. That's common sense. But I want to talk to you about your cell phones. Your cell phones is actually can be a source of uh, virus spread. Um, and the first thing I want to tell you is don't bring them to your face. Rather put them horizontally and press speaker and talk on your cell phone on speaker or through Bluetooth. Obviously don't share your Bluetooth device with other people. Now, before you do that, how you clean your cell phone? This is Clorox wipe. You take one wipe, you put your cell phone here. Then you take another wipe and you just go over cell phone in the front. Now th it has a cover, but my understanding nothing is going to have another one to take responsibility for that. But and then you clean it on the sides. Just don't don't pour liquid in the ports, and you will be fine. Um, do it like that. Then you just dispose the the Clorox wipe. You take regular wipe. You dry it and leave it on another wipe. And then you just wash your hands, take the gloves off and wash your hands the way I showed you earlier. That's how you disinfect your phone. Very simple, very few people do it. Please try. Hello guys. So I got a lot of questions with a lot of different ideas in addition to what we described in previous videos about what can be done. And first of all, I want you to talk to your healthcare provider because some herbs and supplements have interactions with medications. Um, they have cost, and sometimes if you add too many components in this equation, then the results are less than optimal. So my conviction, I heard everybody who asked me questions and I'm going to discuss some of the options. Um, and in the bottom line, simple things makes mo make most sense. I'll start from the end. So I do believe in garlic. Remember, it can thin your blood. If you're on Kumari and blood thinness, talk to your provider. I do think oregano oil is reasonable. I do think vitamin C, if you have flu-like flu -like symptoms, makes sense. Other things are optional. Remember that. And generally, keeping calm, exercises 20 minutes a day, Eating healthy, low sugar, right? Omega-3, generally, your general well-being boosts your immune system. Remember that. Having said that, I will answer your questions. So let me start actually with vitamin C. This is the commercial vitamin C, which is widely available. It is, this is 500 milligrams. We have one gram vitamin C. There was actually uh, one report I saw online from China that says that they used high vitamin C to contain the virus. Whether it's true or not, I can't verify it. Generally, if you have flu-like symptoms, you have healthy kidneys, you don't have a history of kidney stones, it makes sense to use vitamin C. Um, well, the report actually says in China they used allegedly IV vitamin C. It's definitely not something you can do at home, but even taking it by mouth, can help. In addition, there is a fruit called amla, M-A-M-L-A, -A -A, amla. Um, it's an Indian fruit. Um, I think scientific name is Emblica officinalis, amla. It's basically a natural source of vitamin C. Um, this is the 
the actual package. It comes as a white powder uh, that you can add to your coffee. It's very sour. Um, you know, you can mix it with the stevia, um, maybe with monk fruit sweetener uh, in coffee. You can use it in smoothies with some naturally sweet stuff. Um, I, it's a natural source of vitamin C. And I think natural source of vitamin C makes sense. So I do agree with that. Um, that's my first point I wanted to add. Now, people came up with a lot of different ideas. Let me start with Bipleurum. Bipleurum is an herb, a Chinese herb, that allegedly helped during SARS, severe acute respiratory syndrome, several years ago. My point on that, I think it's interesting. If you can afford it, have it in your house. If you develop respiratory system, uh, you can use it. Assuming your uh, provider approves it. Um, it also comes, Buplerum comes as capsules. Um, I don't think there are known dose guidelines. So con uh, uh, consult your uh, healthcare provider. Now, there are, there are reports about something called Lamatium. This is immune support herb, which was used by Indian tribes. I personally do not have a, a lot of experience uh, with that. It's called Lamatium dissectum. There are videos and uh, there are stuff online that actually praises the herb. Again, I'm neutral on that. I'm just informing you that it exists. Um, if your provider agrees, I don't think there is a lot of harm to use it primarily if you have uh, acute symptoms. I do like red ratio. This is mushroom powder. This is mushroom powder. Um, this, is a, if this is a mushroom that enhances your immune system. Again, this is secondary. You can add it to the same coffee. You add this um, and you get vitamin C and you get natural immune boost. So I think it's a good idea. And um, the last point that people ask is a combination peels. There are a lot online. I just brought, brought this one, which is based on amla and holy basil and like three, four other different herbs um, with some uh, pepper, which is supposed to make it absorb better. And it's based on Ayurvedic medicine. Well, I know it's an herbal medicine from, um, um, from India, I'm neutral on that. If you can afford it, you like it. I think there is no downside in taking it. So this, uh, this is just answering your question in a nutshell. What I want also to bring to your attention is something called ashwagandha. Ashwagandha, as well as some other herbs, and the, you can also use valerian root, you can use chamomile. These herbs decrease anxiety. If you take them on a regular basis, uh, for a prolonged period of time. Um, and in my opinion, I, I do not prescribe sedatives to my patient for a long time. I'm in touch with psychiatrists. I let them do it on the real ex uh, exceptional cases. I think sedatives have a lot of problems, uh, obviously in my field in pain medicine, primarily benzodiazepines. Uh, this is natural thing. And I think keeping cool, not panicking, not only helps you to make good decision, it actually boosts your immune system. I would refer back to our previous videos. We will posted some uh, mindful meditations and some other stuff, but pick few things that work for you. My advice, first disinfect, wash your hands, right? Social isolation, disinfect your cell phones, other stuff, um, keep calm, take basic things that work with you uh, and your budget um, and follow up instructions. We're all in the same boat. And I think if there is any bright side in this situation it is that in my humble opinion, in a sense, we felt some common ground. Um, coronavirus doesn't care if you're conservative, if you're liberal, if you're social Democrat or whoever you are, what your religion, what your race, it completely does make a difference. We feel some com com common ground um, in a sense, and we have a lot of opportunity to help others to look for something who is in disadvantage, who needs assistance. People in quarantine may need food. Everybody may need encouragement. 
So I would see, and is it an opportunity and is a challenge? I have no doubt we will emerge from that and life will continue. Thank you.